And she's off! Spotted Eagle Ray 106 is set free. Only 15 minutes ago, she was swimming in these same coastal waters off Sarasota, Florida. Researcher Kim Bassus Hall from nearby Moat Marine Laboratory spied her from a boat. What followed for the beautiful Ray was likely a surprise for her, but routine for Kim and her team. The very first thing we do is scan them for pit tags. Um, that will indicate whether they have been caught before or not. Once that's done, we take a series of measurements of the animal, including how wide it is, how long it is, what the head shapes are, and things like that. We um, take genetic clips by taking the fin clips from the pelvic fin area. We collect a series of photographs of the body. There are very unique spot patterns, which are very important for use in photo ID for identifying individuals. In addition, we collect blood samples by turning the animal over into um, their upside down, so ventral side up, and they go into sort of a trance-like state that elasmorrhics are known called tonic immobility. Once they relax into the state, we're able to um, take a blood sample from the base of their, their tail. Watching out for the spines, you have to be very careful because they have barbs that stick out. And these blood samples are then used um, further on in some um, contaminant analyses. So once the blood samples are collected, then we um, turn the animal back right side up, put in a visual tag, which is called a spaghetti tag, weigh the animal, and then the animal's released. This whole process overall takes about 10 to 15 minutes on board, and then the animal's off on its way. Kim and her team have done this 283 times over the past two years. And even though each ray's work is done in just 15 minutes, for the scientists, it's only the beginning. When we come back off the boat, we get back to the lab, we have um, downloaded our GPS, which has all our boat tracks and our sightings. This information and all our data is entered into our sighting database. The photographs that we take are, um, are labeled and analyzed and cropped, and we have a special program that we use called I3S, which is a spot pattern recognition program. It was initially adapted for looking at star pattern matching. During that time, um, we also take all of our genetic samples and archive them, and then they're shipped off to, to Anna here at the California Academy of Sciences. We extract the DNA from the tissue samples, and after that, we isolate a particular region of interest. We amplify that region, and we sequence the DNA in that region. Once we have sequences for all of the animals from different populations, we're able to look for differences between them. This gives us an idea of migration or movement of, of the populations. Because spotted eagle rays are not very well studied, and they are listed, listed as near-threatened, um, we are interested to see the, about the health of these populations. How big are they, whether they're declining or increasing over time, and how far they're moving. And that allows us to better understand how well these populations will be able to withstand changes in their environment. And their environment is changing. From pollution, we are still investigating the potential effects of the BP oil spill in 2010, what might have on spotted eagle ray populations around the Gulf of Mexico. What's important about what we're doing is collecting the baseline information from our blood samples that we're collecting. One item of concern to us is that in 2011, we observed half the number of spotted eagle rays in our study area per unit of effort as compared to the past years. To a large fishery in Mexico that targets these rays for consumption. Right now we're interested in looking at whether there are differences between the population we're sampling off of Florida and samples that we've gotten that are collected from a targeted spotted eagle ray fishery. What we want to know is whether the animals are from different populations or whether in fact they're moving across the Gulf of Mexico and being taken by that fishery. So while 106 swims on her merry way across the Gulf, Anna and Kim are still hard at work using the information she's provided to help protect her future.